Hello and welcome to Embracing Senior Health, sponsored by Embrace Hospice. I'm your host, Candace Howell. Today we're going to focus on the differences between home health and hospice. And I'm joined today by Janet Blaylock. She is the director of Gentiva Home Health. I also have Pam West. She's an RN from uh, and also a home health clinical specialist. Uh, and Patty Frank is back with us from Embrace Hospice, and she's a social worker. So, ladies, thank you so much for joining us. You. you know, I think the biggest thing with the topics we discuss with this show are it's difficult to talk about these things because it's a place in our life where we, we want to pretend we're never going to go, but we, we, we are going to age, we are going to get older, and we have to think about our options. So today we're talking about home health, and I would love for you ladies to tell me exactly what that is versus hospice. Well, home health is a bridge between the patient, his physician or her physician, and then um, going home so we can take care of them in their home, the comfort of their home. And why is that such a big deal to a lot of people? You know, a lot of times when we get to a point where we need some medical care and we're in a facility, mm -hmm. it's a different feeling to be right. in a facility than being in your home. Well, being in your home, you're able to kind of do what you want to do, you know, and you can't when you're in a facility um, sometimes. And you have your family to be able to come home and support you and pull you through where you need to go. And so let's explain some of the differences, uh, maybe, Patty, with hospice versus home health. With home health, you're looking about wanting to get independent, to get back in the community, to get back active, doing what you wanted to do, going shopping, going to the beach, going golfing, getting yourself ready to get back in the community. With hospice, is you're at the point where there is the, the rehabilitation, it's not there. You're not going to get any better. You're going to need some, uh, uh, some more intense care, some an intense help that hospice can offer. You know, home health set up to get you better, get you out. Hospice, we want you to get out. We want you to go enjoy life. We want you to do things. But at that point, you, don't, you, you can't seek aggressive treatment. There is nothing else that's going to help you to get better and get independent. Um, so hospice is there to give you that support, to work you through that end of life issues. Home health is to get you better, to get you out and get you motivated and get you going again. So and, that's a little bit of a difference. And Janet, let's, let's talk a little bit about what that independence does for someone who's in this situation. I mean, being able to get out and do just what Patty was saying. Exactly. That's, that's the whole goal of home health. We go in, I think it's been proven that patients do very well coming home from the hospital and getting their rehabilitation in the homes. They become independent a lot of times, oftentimes they become independent uh, quicker because they're, they're getting that therapy or nursing care in their own home. Uh, people want to be independent. Our, our aging population wants to be independent. And with us going into that home, assisting that physician with the care in the home, it creates an environment where they can move to that. Uh, more rapidly. And that's absolutely critical. So let's talk a little bit about services for home health. Uh, Pam, tell us a little bit about those. Sure. We have um, RN, skilled nursing care. Um, they go into the home and provide the services that the physician has ordered for. Um, example, wound care, IV therapy, med management, disease process teaching. A lot of teaching is done. Um, we have physical therapy and they help with the patients with their gaits, their balance. Um, occupational therapy, they go in and actually train the patient how to do their own activities of daily living so they can be independent. Uh, we have social workers and they help with community resources and lots of help come from the social workers. Um, and then we have home health aides, they do the personal care while the OT is training the family on how to do this themselves. Um, and, and what about the area demographics? Like we talked a little bit about, you know, who is, you know, kind of who is the population that we're looking at for this, ladies? Most of our patients at Gentiva are 65 and older. They are retired. They, a lot, we have a lot of uh, people who have retired here from up north, other uh, areas. They are very active people. So our job is to go in and get them back to their normal state of health so that they can continue their uh, active lifestyle. And where is this care provided to? I think that's another thing that our folks at home would love to know about. Well, the care is provided in the patient's home, um, but we also can go to assisted living facilities, and um, that is something that they, you know, enjoy having somebody come in and, and actually take care of them there. Uh, and, and what about countywide? So, okay. so Ori and Georgetown, I would imagine. Ori, George County, and Williamsburg County, and we actually um, have plans to move into the Florence area, expanding out to all the counties that are around around us. 
Okay, very Pretty good. Pretty soon. Well, this is a great topic because I think a lot of people, you know, they want the opportunity to be independent, mm -hmm. and, and you're really looking at services that do that. Um, and, and hospice, you know, I think that, in, in Patty, we talked about this in some of the previous shows, I think people think hospice, I'm going to die, but that's not always the case. You know, there, there are many times where we, we can rehabilitate patients and have them, you know, mm -hmm. come back to a very active lifestyle and maybe come back to the home health scenario. So I think that's something to add there too. Uh, so we've got much, much more coming up after the break and these three ladies will be with us again. Uh, and we're going to continue the discussion on home health. So stay with us. Uh, you are watching Embracing Senior Health. If your doctor refers you to a hospice program, you may continue to keep him or her as the primary care physician. Many hospices ask you to take their medical director, but you do not need to do this. Your doctor can be your doctor through your hospice journey. Many people think that because you've been referred to a hospice services, that you cannot remain in your home and need to go to a facility. That is not true. Your end of life care can be provided by your hospice team in your home where you're most comfortable. Hello and welcome to Embracing Senior Health, sponsored by Embrace Hospice. I'm your host, Candace Howell. We're focusing on home health today, uh, and I have three great ladies with me. I have Pam and Janet and Patty. Uh, and we're, again, we're talking about home health and really the difference between home health and hospice. Um, and so we want to talk a little bit about what the patients actually benefit from with home health services. Well, the services that we provide with Gentiva um, helps them to become independent in their home. They don't have to rely on somebody to take care of them. And we can keep them out of the hospitals. Um, sometimes that's the only way they know to do is to go run into their emergency room. But now they have somebody to call upon, so it's very helpful. You know, and, and what are, maybe paint me a picture of a mm -hmm. uh, typical home health patient. Uh, tell me a little bit about what they might be like, Janet. Well, in this area, we have a lot of um, congestive heart failure patients. We have a lot of cardiac patients. Um, when they come to home health, we have a nurse available 24 hours a day. So a lot of times when they have been newly diagnosed with a disease, they come home, they're not sure, they feel something different, that would be a time when they would run back to the emergency room, but with their nurse um, available to them, they can call, make that call, and discuss their situation with that nurse, and she will determine whether she needs to make a visit, call the physician, or send them back. So they have that uh, connection with that home health agency, and it's like a bridge between them and their physician that they know they have someone there that they can count on to help them through this process. And, and, and immediate care too, mm -hmm. being able to just pick up the phone and say I Anytime. have this going on and I'm concerned about it, should I be worried, should I go to the ER, you know, what should I do? And I think for a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a very daunting thing to have to go and sit in a waiting room and go to the emergency sure. room and the cost alone of doing either one uh, it is very difficult and so how does a patient get set up for home health? Um, we work strictly with the physicians. We can have, we get referrals from hospitals when the patient's discharged from the hospital. Uh, rehab facilities, if they're in a rehab facility and they're coming home, uh, that physician may refer that patient to home health for further uh, therapy or nursing skills. Um, we also work strictly with uh, uh, primary care physicians. The patient may go into the office and, and he uh, identifies a need for home health and he'll give us a call and send us an order. But we work under orders of a physician so we don't just pick up patients without that physician order. But uh, if a family member is in a home and they identify a need or they say mom needs or dad needs uh, a nurse to come in or a therapist, they're getting weak, they're falling, they can communicate with their physician and he calls, you know, Gentiva or a home health agency and gets them set up with that home care that they need to help them remain independent and in their home and safe. Mm. Uh, you know, Patty, tell us a little bit about, again, just to clarify for the folks who may just be tuning in, difference between home health and hospice. And with, with home health, you do want to get independent. You, you want to get better 
you want to be able to stay at home, to be independent at home. You may not be able to get out and play golf again, or you may have this going on, but with home health, they can, they can come in and they can set up equipment in the home. They can tell you what devices to use to stay in comfortably. They can link you to those resources. When you get to the point that some of that independence is no longer there, cardiac, as Janet was saying, um, congested heart failure, um, liver disease, something that's not functioning correctly. You're not going to get any better. At that point, Gentiva pick up the phone and they'll call and say, you know, guys, we've got this patient. They've got the dementia. We're, we're not going to be able to do anything else with them because they can't retain it. The family is struggling. They need further education. They need further assistance. They've reached their limit with home health. You guys would be great to come in now and set up your services with them to continue that. So that coordination of care is not interrupted at all. They take them to the, the, the highest point they can get. And when that's done, whether it's an Alzheimer's patient, dementia patient, an end-stage COPD patient, at that point they say, you know, guys, we've done what we can do. They're as independent as possible, but now they need more. Mm -hmm. So can you guys go in and start pr providing services? And we, then we pick up with the home health aides. We pick up with our nurses. Um, so there's a very good partnership there it, to, to a, say, okay, absolutely. we're at the crossover point, mm -hmm. and we've gone from mm -hmm. home health. We're now moving to a hospice situation. But, but what's exciting about that is that you know, once our patient becomes, we get our patient, and they're doing so well, they're getting independent, but they just need that extra little oomph to get over the, the hump and then get back active. Well, we'll call them and say, look guys, we're getting ready to discharge this patient. They're doing really well. Mm -hmm. Can you go in and just give them that little extra services to get them to where they need to be safely? So we work with those safety issues and the coordination is wonderful. And I think that's what's so valuable about this discussion is that you know, you, you can go from home health to hospice, mm -hmm. but come back to that home health situation mm -hmm. once again. I so to the need, that's correct. Exactly. And, and having the professionals there to help you understand mm -hmm. what stage you're actually mm -hmm. at. Well, coming up after the break, we're going to talk about how do we pay for home health? And that's a very interesting discussion. We'll talk about insurance uh, and the steps you need to take to get set up. So stay with us. We're going to be right back. Hospice pays for the majority of medications that patients are on upon admission to hospice. We take care of medications from prescription from your doctor to the delivery of medications to your home. We take care of all of your needs with your prescription medications. We at Embrace Hospice are not only dedicated to our patients and families, but to our veterans. A retired Army veteran with 27 years and my chief nursing officer with 20 years, a retired Army nurse, we believe that veterans deserve the care for what they did for our country at the end of their life. Welcome back to Embracing Senior Health on WMBF News. I'm Candace Howell, and I have three great guests with me today. We're talking about uh, home health services and hospice. Um, and, and the other thing, too, we want to mention uh, in this show is how do we pay for home health? That's something that I'm sure a lot of people are curious about at this point in the show. Uh, and how does insurance play into that role? Well, at uh, Gentiva, we accept uh, different payment sources, but our main uh, uh, patient uh, population is over 65. Uh, Medicare is a big uh, uh, insurance program that we work with closely with and if a patient has traditional Medicare and the need is there for home health and they meet all the requirements, uh, traditional Medicare pays 100% of home health uh, and how much is, of a savings is that roughly? Like if they had that Medicare, I mean, I imagine that's a pretty big savings. Yes. Yeah. Um, we do take private insurance. We take, we have Medicaid patients and we also uh, do private pay. You know, we may have a person come in on vacation. We take private pay for, we may have to go out and do some type of uh, uh, injection or something they get and they're here on vacation and they need that assistance so we do take private pay as well. Oh that's really great. So uh, I wanted to hit the services again because you guys at Gentiva have some fantastic services. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about physical therapy and what you offer there as well. Yes, uh, we're very proud um, of our physical therapy and all of our services for, 
for rehab, um, but our physical therapy goes in to make sure the patient's uh, safe in their home. We don't want them falling, and a lot of times that's one of the reasons why they end up back in the hospital. So our physical therapy works really hard with the patient and caregiver to make their home safe and do gait training and balance training. And we have a special program called Safe Strides. Yes that it's, it's a multidisciplinary program, meaning everyone that's involved with the patient's care is on this team. And it's, it's balance is the big thing with that program, and it, it's a fall prevention program. And the reason we have that is because we have so many seniors that have had issues with falls. And uh, this program has been very successful in preventing those and re-injuring or injuring a patient. And I know you guys have a, a great program for patients that may uh, have COPD as well. Right, I'm glad you asked that because we're really excited about this special program. It's a cardiopulmonary program and it's for our COPD patients as well as CHF, someone that's had a heart attack or a lot of pneumonias. Um, and our nurses, our whole entire team is trained specifically for these patients. Um, we keep them out of the hospital. They're not going back in. And that's really good. We don't want them to have to keep continuing to go back because that's cost. And our outcomes have been very good yeah. with that program. And again, with Gentiva, our, our education for our clinicians on these specialty programs is very intense. And uh, they all are put through these. Our nurses go through like 40 classes for Gentiva for these programs and the therapist. We have a rehab director and she mm -hmm. puts them through these classes before they ever go out to see a patient. And I think one of the diagnoses we haven't touched on is a stroke, the, mm. the, your CVA, that also uses speech therapy that, they, that is offered through Home Health as well to help them with you know, speech and swallowing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that the speech therapist could actually help with stroke patients yeah, as well. Oftentimes people think of speech as, as talking, mm -hmm. but our speech therapist assists with swallowing, uh, cognitive mm -hmm. issues, memory. Um, so they work with a lot of different um, areas for a patient. Mm -hmm. they are, our therapist is Vital STEM certified and um, uh, Lee Silverman certified. So those mm -hmm. are two programs that we use to treat our patients that um, some of the other therapists may not be certified in, but we definitely use and those. Real quickly before we go to break again too, how do our folks at home know, um, how do they know when maybe their loved one is ready for home health? What are some of the signs? Um, probably if they're falling a lot, um, if they're going to the doctor and they're coming home and they're not able to take their medications because there's just so, so many, and you'll be surprised what these patients keep in their medicines in, bags, and they get all confused. So maybe a daughter or a son comes over and sees that they're, they're not acting like they normally should. They can just talk with their family physician and say, I think mom or dad or whoever, you know, needs something else, and can yeah, we have them evaluated? Things coming up from mm -hmm. diabetes or whatever, that they need some, a nurse to come look at some wound care issues. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, well, coming up after the break, uh, these ladies will tell you how you can get in touch with them if you do have a loved one who maybe needs home health services or even hospice services. So stay with us. You are watching Embracing Senior Health. At Embrace Hospice, volunteers are the backbone of our care. If you feel that you could provide quality, compassionate care to one of our hospice patients, please call 1-855-OPEN-ARMS. I'm encouraged that here at Embrace we have several competent, compassionate spiritual care coordinators that come alongside the patients at the end of their life and help them in their spiritual journey. Welcome back to Embracing Senior Health. I'm Candace Howell and today we've been talking about home health services and the difference between home health services ladies and hospice. So one more time for our viewers at home, the, the real difference between the two. Independence, more care is what you're looking at. You know, mm -hmm. and, and again, with, with home health, they can come in and set up safety devices in the home. They can get you going and get you to the level of independence that you, that you can get to. 
Yeah, and I think that's the biggest takeaway too, is that the, that word independence. Mm -hmm. And it's so critical for folks that are in this situation. Mm -hmm. uh, they wanna make sure that they can still maintain that independence. And that independence really, a lot of times, is a direct connection to our health. Mm -hmm. uh, when we're independent and not you know, stuck in a, a place where we can't get out and do the things that we love to do, I think mm -hmm. sometimes our health suffers. Uh, and the other thing I want to mention too is we talked about the fact that if you're in a home health situation but you go to hospice, mm -hmm. there is a great chance that you could still come back to home health depending on how you progress in, in your care. Uh, payment. Let's talk about that again, ladies. So how do we pay for home health and, and who's eligible? Again, our biggest population is over the age of 65. If they have traditional Medicare and they meet the requirements, it is 100% covered. Um, other payment sources are private insurance, and uh, we even take private pay. So. And you guys are also um, have a great connection with the VA. We do. Yeah, so if you're a veteran and you're interested in these services, good news is, is they're set up to work with the VA, yeah. um, and, and that's a great thing there, too. And I know a lot of people at home that have been watching the show are going to want to know how to get a hold of you ladies. So uh, at Gentiva, how can they get in touch with you? The biggest thing, if they see a need with their loved one or family member, is to contact their physician and uh, ask for our services, and the physician will send an order. And we normally try to see our patients in 24 hours. Uh, 48 hours is the outset. As soon as we get that referral from that physician, we are calling that patient, setting up a time to come out and see them and evaluate their needs. Okay, and also want to mention too that Gentiva services in Ori and Georgetown and also Williamsburg counties. Uh, so if you live in those three counties, you're all set there. Uh, and then Patty with Embrace mm -hmm. Hospice, tell us how we can get in it's touch with Embrace. It's basically the same type of process that Janet was saying. Um, however, we do get referrals from, from family members. They can call our office and they'll say, you know, we have this need. Can you just come out and see if hospice is appropriate for, for mom or dad or, or my wife? You know, they have some dementia call in our office and at that point we can go out and actually see them and say yeah you know what you are hospice appropriate and we'll help them get in touch with their doctor and get that order and we do also work with the VA Gentiva could also call and say you know what we've got a patient that needs hospice can you guys go out and do an assessment so it's it's pretty easy to that process is very easy and we work with the families to, to work through that process with them so it's not overwhelming for them it is okay. a very seamless transition mm -hmm. we work with the, phys with the physician getting the order and then we work mm -hmm. closely with Embrace to try to, mm -hmm. to smooth it, make Perfect. that as smooth it's as possible. Great partnership mm -hmm. between Embrace exactly. and Gentiva. Well, thank you so much for joining us, folks. We appreciate it. Uh, you have been watching Embracing Senior Health on WMBF News. We're here every Friday at noon. Hope to see you next week.